Now we'll get back to the story of Naaman in our text. Naaman, the Bible says in verse 1 that he was the captain of the host of the, of the king of Syria. He was a leader and he was a mighty man. You talk about warriors, and, and, and I think about so many times, uh, I've seen a lot on, on TV, some of the, the people coming back from Iraq. Uh, I actually have a guy that works for me in, in, in my job that, uh, that spent two tours in Iraq. And he came, he came back and he works for me, and, and I talk to him often, and he's let me know some of the things that have gone on over there. And I think of, of how uh, the Naaman was a leader for the king, for the army, for the king of Syria. And the Bible says that he was a great man, that he was very good at what he did. I can imagine that... Now, you have to realize that they didn't have TVs back then. But Naaman was the type of person, and he was well known enough that... Now, I can remember as a, as a little kid. Now, uh, and, and I, I could tell you lots of stories about Jim. Uh, Jim and I grew up together. We, we went to the same church together. Um, we were licensed to preach about the same time. Uh, we, we, we did a lot of things together. Jim, Jim's come a long way. I don't know if he shared his... I'm sure he shared his testimony with you. But Jim and I... Uh, we, I'll tell you some stories later. When it's not on camera and he can't rebut them. <laughs> but I can see Naaman and I can see me as a little kid and... And I remember, I can remember when I was a little kid and, and the Phoenix Suns were playing. And I always wanted to be uh, a lot of different people in the Suns. I, I mean, I always thought, and I'm going to date myself a little bit, but um, I, I used to think that, that uh, Larry Nance was something else. I used to think that Kyle Macy was, was, was awesome. So, I mean, that, that was a few years ago. But see, I grew up thinking that's what I wanted. I wanted to be somebody like that. I wanted to be somebody that, 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 that was famous for something like that. I think that Naaman was probably in that realm. I think that, that kids probably got out and with their play swords and, and were sword fighting. And one would say, I want to be Naaman. And he said, no, you were Naaman last time. I want to be Naaman this time. Naaman was a great man. And the Bible says that, that not only was he a great man because, because of, his, uh, of his appearance, uh, because of his, because of his uh, ability to be a great soldier, but they said he was a good man. The Bible says in this story, and, and you can read the story later on if you'd like, but the Bible says in this story that, that, that what happened is that, that Naaman, even though he was a good man, the, the last part of verse 1 says, but he was a leper. Now you have to realize that being a leper was a death sentence. Being a leper was, was not something that you can just go to the doctor and get some, some cream and, and spread over it and it'd be a good thing and you, everything would be fine. Being a leper was a death sentence. And so Naaman knew that it was just a matter of time before he was going to die. Now the Bible says in this story, if you read this story, the Bible says that, that uh, there was a young woman that was taken in battle, and, and if you read the story, it's, it's an amazing thing. There's a young woman that was taken in battle, and this woman became the maid for Naaman's wife. And this woman said uh, to, to Naaman's wife, she said, Oh, but if the master, if Naaman could just get to the prophet, I know, to, to God's prophet, I know that he would be healed. And so the woman went to the king, and remember, the king loved Naaman. The king thought that Naaman was, was it. I mean, he was the captain of the host. He was, he was a leader in, in the king's army. And the king didn't do anything without consulting, I'm sure, with him, because, because by that, the Bible says that, that by Naaman, that, that uh, the Lord had given deliverance to Syria. And so the, Naaman's wife went to the king of Syria, and she said, listen, if we could just get Naaman... To the one person in Syria, I mean in, in uh, uh, over Jordan, if we could just get him to this prophet, I know that this prophet could help him. And so the king wrote a letter. Now that had to. There, there were a couple things that had to happen. Uh, when Naaman got ready to travel from kingdom to kingdom, if they were friendly, 
uh, they had to have a note from the king saying it was okay for them to leave and ask for safe passage. And so this king, I'm sure, wrote a note to anybody that Naaman would go through the kingdom and ask for safe passage because this was one of the king's men. And the Bible says that he took a lot of things. He took clothes and he took, he took uh, valuable things. And the Bible says that, that they got to Jordan. Or they got to, to, uh, they got, they got to Israel. And the Bible says that as he went into the king of Israel and he, and he gave him the note that the king of Israel looked at the note and it said he tore his clothes and he said, who am I to decide who lives or dies? Well, see, God's got a plan. God had already told uh, Elisha. Now, everybody knows who Elisha is. Elisha was uh, the protege for Elijah. And so God had already told Elisha that, he was, that, that, that Naaman was coming. And so Elisha knew, and, and so he sent word to the king. He said, he said, when the man gets here, because after the king had rent his clothes and said, who am I to decide who lives or dies? Uh, the Bible says that, that Elisha sent word to the king so that the king would send Naaman to him. And so the, the king said, well, okay, Naaman, here's where you need to go. And so the Bible's, this story is awesome when you start to think about what's getting ready to happen. Naaman came to, to, uh, to Elisha's house. And the Bible says that, that uh, Naaman, now you've got to remember, being as important man as Naaman is, he's got, he's got folks around him too. He's got people that, that are, their sole job is to be a servant to him. And so Naaman, as he, as he comes to, to Elisha's house, the Bible says that, that they knocked on the door. The story goes that they knocked on the door and Elisha sent a messenger. Verse 10 said, And Elisha sent a messenger unto, unto Naaman, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh will come again. Now here's where the story's going to get good. The Bible says that Naaman was so mad. He was wroth. He was so upset because he'd come all that way. Now, I was going to and I didn't. I didn't look up how far it was. But it was a good long ways from, the, from where uh, Naaman was to where Naaman had to go. And the Bible says that he was upset. He was mad. He was, he was almost indignant. He was so upset. He said, you know, I thought that at least, at the very least, that the, the, the prophet of God, the man of God would come out and he would wave his hand over me. He'd have me lean down and, and, and put his hand on me and anoint my head with oil or, or whatever. I thought that at the very least that he would do that. This was a mighty man. And he was mad. He said, I thought at the very least that's what he would do. And the Bible says that, that, that he was so upset that he was going to do the same thing that a lot of us do Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. We come to church and I love the praise reports. Uh, and I love to, to hear prayer requests. How many of you believe that, that God can still heal? How many of you come to church every Sunday? And this happens a lot. You come to church every Sunday, and, and believe me, when, when your pastor preaches a message, there's a lot of prayer that goes into that message. There's a lot of, of things that, that he's prayed about, and he's, he's talked to God about. There's a lot of things that God is dealing with him about when he preaches. And we come to church... First of all, not expecting anything. And so when we leave with nothing, we leave not disappointed. <clears throat> Naaman was getting ready to leave exactly the same way that he came. He got there as a leper. 
He, he said, well, I thought at the very least that he would, he would wave his hand over me and, and pray for me, and I'd be whole. The Bible said he was bad. Let me tell you something that, that keeps us from serving God to the fullest. Pride. Naaman had so much pride. He thought, he thought, whoa, Elisha doesn't even know who I am. He wanted to play that card. You know how, how sometimes uh, important people get into restaurants. Well, do you know who I am? Na Naaman was going to play that card. Do you know who I am? I think that if I was Elisha, I would say, well, do you know who I serve? <laughs> Might have made a little bit of difference. But Naaman was so upset that he was getting ready to walk away the same way he came in. Knowing that that journey that he had made and, and took him so long that it would have done absolutely no good. But then something happened. 